this is prompt engineering, and this is prompt engineering, and even this is prompt engineering. Long story short, everything you've seen here has been generated by AI, but there is a catch. The art and text that AI produces can only be as good as the prompt that the user input, or more specifically, the AI's output is only as good as its prompter. That's you. And in this video, we'll go over the art and science of prompt engineering, showing you advanced techniques and cool free resources so that you can turn your outputs from this to this. Ready? Let's go. All right, let's make sure we're all on the same page. First off, prompts are instructions given to a large language model to enforce rules, automate processes, and ensure specific qualities and quantities of generated output. Prompts are important because they are the main way to extract desired outputs from a large language model without having to change the model itself. No weight modification, no extra fine tuning or hyperparameter searches, nothing. Just raw human computer interaction. At its core, the goal of prompt engineering is about alignment and model steerability and prompts should have some non-empty combination of the following elements. Instructions, questions, input data, and examples. I'm sure you know what these four words mean outside of the context of prompt engineering. So good news, they mean the exact same thing within prompt engineering. So let's not overcomplicate things. All resources and papers will be available in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump into the types of prompt engineering that experts from software engineers to AI researchers to AI artists all use to get the best outputs possible. <laughs> First, instruction prompting. This is probably the most basic that a prompt can get. It's literally just giving instructions to the LLM. For example, if you want an LLM to engage in sentiment analysis, you'd simply supply the text that you want to analyze alongside an instruction saying, label the sentiment of this sentence as positive or negative. Or maybe something like, given the following bullet point information about me, write a 650 word college essay. One fun example is that chemical engineers and chemical researchers at Carnegie Mellon University literally gave an LLM the prompt, synthesize ibuprofen. And you know what happened? It did. It conducted a bit of research through the internet and eventually came back with a recipe for synthesizing ibuprofen. That being said, a language model is not a search engine, and in most scenarios, it will fail to give you actionable outputs if your inputs are two to three words long. Thus, to make sure your instruction prompting is as effective as possible, use verbs in your prompt. Translate, interpret, compose, write, create, explain. In fact, we even used AI to attain a list of effective instruction prompting verbs. Here are the top 10 instruction prompting verbs that our team elicited from GPT-4. Ask, explain, summarize, generate, translate, predict, suggest, compare, define, and describe. By using commanding imperative verbs, LLMs will be more likely to produce desired outputs, especially if the LLM in question was fine-tuned for instructions itself, like InstructGPT, for example. In fact, I used instruction prompting to create our YouTube channel's most viewed short. It's just my face reciting some AI-generated words. Check out that video in the link in the description. As we can see, the results are pretty effective. Just look at the views. <laughs> but okay, up next, let's examine a type of prompt engineering known as persona pattern prompting. This is the type of prompting where you tell the AI to mimic a particular persona. For example, we can say, you are a perceptive editor with the experience at the New Yorker and Harper's Magazine. I'll submit three paragraphs in my next message and I need help rephrasing the second paragraph. Take the first and final paragraphs into consideration since they provide important context. Got it? Let's go. Here, we operate under the assumption that the AI has indeed read the New Yorker and Harper's Magazine. And given the data set that many of these LLMs are trained on, this assumption seems pretty fair. Note that the results of persona pattern prompting rely heavily on the way you describe the persona. For example, if we're editing a section of some article we're writing, we'd get a different output if we tell the AI, you are an editor from the New York Times, than if we said, you are an editor from Mad Magazine. And here's the cool part about persona pattern prompting. It's such a popular technique that researchers working on the latest LLMs are taking it into account when designing new pre-training methods. Meta, when designing Llama 2, invented a new technique called ghost attention that assumes users will use chatbots in this way. They even made the Llama 2 chatbot undergo some serious persona testing before releasing it to the public. In their 78-page research paper, Meta spends a good amount of time showcasing how incredible Llama 2 is at impersonating Oscar Wilde. And personally, I use persona prompting to create titles for my content. That is, I feed a very specially designed prompt to an AI in order to create titles for my articles and YouTube videos. In fact, even the clickbaity thumbnail text comes from LLMs. As for which LLM I use, and which personalities I list as inspirations for titles or clickbait text, that's one secret I'll never tell. No, seriously. 
that's actual intellectual property. But you can come up with your own combination of LLMs and personas for your particular use case as you see fit. All right, up next, chain of thought prompting. In chain of thought prompting, we force the model to explain its reasoning when answering a question. This example from Lillian Wang illustrates it perfectly. Pause the video to give it a read. Personally, I use chain of thought prompting more than any other form of prompt engineering. Why? Because it's how I debug my code. You may have seen this video we made in the past. In it, I test which large language model is the best at coding, whether it's GitHub Copilot, StarCoder, ChatGPT, or Gorilla. And when I tested the models to debug some faulty code, I used chain of thought engineering to force it to explain where the error is and how to fix it. For example, let's look at how ChatGPT fixes faulty Python code. First, here's my prompt. I'm not going to read the entire thing to you out loud because you can do that on your own. However, just note that this is an example of buggy code followed by a solution and the reason why the initial code is wrong. Then, for example two, I just provided the buggy code and the problem. Up here, I tell the AI, hey, based on this first example, I want you to give me a solution to the second example and an explanation as to why my original code is wrong and please print your response in the same way I've formatted my code or better. And the result is beautiful. Just look at how ChatGPT formats the code itself as actual code. It finds the bug and tells me how to fix it. The bug, by the way, is that I was using a space where I should have been using an empty string. For a full explanation of this problem slash coding test, check out the video that we mentioned earlier. The full prompt and response is available over there. Okay. Now that we know about chain of thought decoding, we can build off of it to arrive at self-consistency decoding. This method performs several chain of thought rollouts, then selects the most commonly reached conclusion out of all the rollouts. And if these rollouts disagree a lot, a human can be queried for the correct chain of thought. That is, you just do chain of thought prompting repeatedly and pick the best result. The way you pick the best result, that is the criteria you're using, the algorithms you're employing, and the examples you're picking from can vary from task to task. And there's an entire 24 page paper about it. But here's the punchline. Self-consistency decoding significantly improves accuracy in a range of arithmetic and common sense reasoning tasks across four language models with varying scales. That being said, one limitation of self-consistency is that it incurs more computation costs. However, in practice, people can try a small number of paths, for example, five or 10, as a starting point to realize most of the gains while not incurring too much cost. As in most cases, the performance saturates quickly, as seen in this figure from the paper. Figure two. And that's self-consistency decoding in a nutshell. Chain of thought decoding multiple times. Finally, let's talk about prompting for image generation. This is perhaps the flashiest type of prompt engineering because the outputs are indeed completely visual. As of right now, if you want to use text to image generators like Stable Diffusion or DALI, you're stuck with a single prompt and the inability to give few shot examples. However, here are some resources I've found to help you with generating images. Let's use those resources right now to come up with a thumbnail for this video. We'll start with a basic prompt and iterate on it. First things first, I need an idea. I'm in the mood of creating something fun and fantastical. So let's create a nice fun red bird, like a cardinal or a phoenix. In order to create our fun red bird, let's start with a basic prompt and iterate on it. Okay, so the initial no effort bare bones prompt is a red bird flying through the sky. This is a simple description of what we eventually want to create. And entering this into stable diffusion, here is the image produced. We can do a bit better than that. Sure, the bird is flying through the sky, but its wings are tucked into its body. Those two tails seem a bit strange and anatomically incorrect. Not to mention in some places, I can't tell where the tails end and where the sky begins. Long story short, we can do better than this. So let's talk about word choice. In this GitHub repo, we find words that we should use when prompting an AI art generator. These are words that historically have performed well when other AI artists needed to create fantastical images for anything from logos to Dungeons and Dragons games to even gaining Reddit karma. So with that in mind, let's add some of those words to our prompt as follows. We start with a red bird flying through the sky to a list of a bunch of descriptions. All I did here was take one term from each of the categories mentioned in the GitHub repo and I concatenated them. And the resulting bird from this list of descriptions looks like this. Okay, not bad. The sky looks more realistic now and it's not blending into the wings. The tail is no longer split in two. However, that being said, the wings themselves are still a bit awkward. It seems we have one wing pressed against the right side of the bird's body and another wing mid-flap kind of blurred in motion that also stems from the right side of the bird's body. 
So sure, we've improved, but there's still room for more improvement. Let's keep going. Of course, we can just continue iterating on our prompt, adding more and more words. However, there are some additional techniques we can take advantage of, namely weights and negative prompts. Weights allow you to dictate to the AI image generator exactly how heavily you want each item in our list of words to be valued. You can see a classic example of this in the GitHub repo linked above. If we want to create an animal that's 70% Shiba Inu and 30% polar bear, we can simply include in our prompt a hybrid between Shiba Inu, 0.7, and a polar bear. Since the weights must add up to 1.0, aka 100%, the polar bear's 0.3 coefficient is implied. Now let's discuss negative prompts. Basically, if a prompt is a list of terms you'd want the AI to take into consideration when generating an image, a negative prompt tells the AI exactly what you want the image not to be. If you want your image to be beautiful, then include ugly in your negative prompt. If you want your image to be realistic, then include unrealistic in your negative prompt. As a result, our overall prompt now becomes this and the resulting image looks like this. A few notes on this image. The 0.95 weights added to the prompt was the result of a manual hyperparameter search that I conducted personally. I wanted our image to avoid delving into uncanny valley territory while still giving off the same energy as a realistic painting. And if we can compare where we started with where we ended up, you can see just how far we can go. This is the power of proper prompt engineering. And so it turns out that words are in fact a valid engineering tool. A hammer is only as effective as a carpenter holding it. The same goes for a chef with his pan, a software engineer with her keyboard, and an AI enthusiast with their LLM. If you learned something here, give this video a like, feel free to subscribe to our channel, and if you have any questions or even additional prompt engineering techniques that we may have missed in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, follow DeepGram for more AI content.